Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Jinam Shah. I'm a consultant pulmonologist and allergy specialist practicing in Mumbai, India. Today we are going to be discussing about uh, asthma and its treatment. Before we start the video, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell icon for regular updates. So today's video we are going to be breaking into three parts. The first part is why medicine is necessary in asthma and what kind of medicines to be taken. Second part is going to be regarding all the different types of medicines which are available for asthma and the third part is going to be the newer therapies which are the latest advances in the treatment of asthma first topic we'll discuss about what kind of treatment for asthma so it's a very simple concept so you know that asthma is caused because of genetics and environmental factors both of these factors are not under our control neither we can change the environment of an individual unless you decide that you are going to be shifting your bases to some other country city or state that's a different thing but practically we are going to be at the same place Second factor is the genetic factor again, which is a host factor. You cannot change that at all. So when you can't change those two factors, what you are going to do is think about treatment. So treatment is the only thing, and treatment is controlling of symptoms. It's not like infection. Say you have malaria, dengue, or typhoid. What will you do? It's caused because of some organism, some germs. So given antibiotic, given anti-helminthic agents, it will kill those particular organisms, and the disease is cured. The treatment may be five days, seven days, ten days, something like that. But asthma, as we know, is because of environmental factors and genetic factors. Both of these we cannot change, so the treatment has to be uh, for a long period of time. How long we don't know. It can be for few years, few months. You know, it can be lifelong also. It may happen that as and when you grow old, your symptoms might go away, and then we can stop the treatment. It might happen that it might continue for a long period of time. But the important thing is to know that if you are on regular medicines, your asthma is going to be very well controlled. Now we need to know what kind of treatment. So suppose you have a problem over your skin. Where would you apply your medicines? Obviously over the skin. If you have some back issues, what kind of medicines? Some local ointment you'll apply. Similarly, if you have problems in the lungs, where should the medicine go? In the lungs. So suppose you take a tablet. Example, you take a Dolo tablet or a Prosine tablet. Where would it go? It will go first of all go into the stomach. Stomach it will get absorbed into the blood. The blood will go to all parts of the body. Blood is not going to go only in one organ. It will go to brain, liver, heart, kidney, every organ. Is it required there? No. It is required only in one particular organ, that is the lung. But it goes to all parts of the body. So what will happen is the medicine will get wasted and it will have a lot of side effects. So that is the first problem with the tablet. The side effects are more. Second problem with the tablet is it takes a long time to act. You take a tablet, stomach, stomach to blood, blood to all parts of the body and then reaches the lung. So if you take a tablet today, it might act tomorrow. And the third very important part of the tablet is the doses are very, very heavy. Have you ever taken a Dolo tablet? You know the dose of Dolo? It's 650 milligrams, that is mg. One milligram is equivalent to 1000 micrograms. Suppose 650 milligrams is equivalent to 6,50,000 micrograms. That is a power of one Dolo tablet. What we give, that is what I give as a pulmonologist are inhalers. So any inhaler that you see, the doses are in micrograms generally 200 or 400 micrograms. So if 200 micrograms is one, one puff and you're talking about Dolo that is 6,50,000 micrograms. So if you take 3,250 pumps, it is going to be equivalent to one Dolo tablet. Suppose you take it two puffs in a day, that is 60 in a day, 720 in a year. If you keep on taking it for five years consecutively, two puffs in a day, it is going to be approximately equivalent to one Dolo tablet. That is why inhalers are the best. They go directly inside the lungs, they act fast within few seconds to minutes it will start working. Second advantage, it doesn't go to any other parts of the body. It is only limited to the lungs. So there are absolutely no side effects. There are minuscule, but predominantly there are no side effects. Third thing, it does not cause any kind of addiction. It is not containing tobacco, nicotine, alcohol, or any kind of addictive substances. It's the same tablet, which is broken down into particles and taken in an inhaled route. So the concept about addiction does not come in. What do you see in movies? The pump is not taken and the actor or actress falls away and all those kind of things. It's all, it's a myth. It doesn't happen like that. There's no concept only because it's the same tablet which is broken down into particles. Why would it cause any kind of trouble? 50 years back, 50, 60 years back, the concept of inhalers was not there. That is why doctors used to give you injections, tablets and all those kind of things. As in when science and technology advanced, we realized that something can be given directly in the lungs because it's an external organ. We can directly give. That is why the concept of inhalers were made and not to make you addicted because of that. Now you may ask that uh, for heart and kidney, why can't we do similar things? They are internal organs. I cannot give directly injections to the brain or the heart to the kidney. I have no other option. That is why what I do is I give a tablet 
which goes into the stomach blood via via all parts of the body and ultimately reaches that particular organ it will go to all other organs also but at least it will reach the area where it is required but obviously it will have its own side effects one common question is always asked that it contains steroids now giving the same example if you apply creams most of the creams do contain steroids most of the eye drops or ear drops do contain steroids steroids in local action are never going to be a problem because they are not going to affect any other parts of the body steroids are harmful for a long period of time if they are taken as an oral or an injection because those are going to areas where it is not required all parts of the body local inhalers like in pumps if they go only in the lungs they are not going to have any kind of side effects because of steroids you know lot of celebrities you know about amitabh bachchan david beckham priyanka chopra they all have asthma lot of athletes lot of celebrities mountaineers cyclers olympic uh, you know medalists have asthma the important point to understand is asthma does not affect your lifestyle you can live easily 100 years without any issues if you are on the right medicines and you are on the right consultation path so one question everyone just ask me always is why take it regularly i take it only when the symptoms arise so for that we will come to an example of diabetes suppose a person has diabetes or blood pressure when do we take the medicines we take it every day why we need to control the sugars but the person will tell i don't have any issues because of sugar most of the time we realize we have sugars when we go for a routine checkup oh sugars are high when you go for a checkup but after realizing you have diabetes you take regular medicines why you don't have any symptoms for diabetes you are still taking medicines regularly the reason being if sugars are uncontrolled it will damage your arteries of the heart kidney brains everywhere and the arteries will gradually narrow down and over a period of years it will get suddenly blocked that is why you will have a heart attack you might have a brain stroke you might have kidney which is getting dysfunctional so all those thing happens because uncontrolled diabetes for a long period of time that is why you take diabetes medicine regularly so that in the future all those kind of symptoms does not arise and your kidney heart and lungs and everything are safe similar concept is for blood pressure and the same concept is for actually asthma what happens is because of the narrowing you have symptoms when you take a medicine on an sos basis whenever you feel the need you take it what will happen temporarily it will open up but again whenever you have a trigger or an environmental changes again it will narrow down so this keeps on happening but every time this effect happens the lung will keep on getting damaged damaged and damaged and over a period of years what will happen is the lung has become so much damaged that even the medicines will not work after that so to prevent that from happening in later on in life you need to be on regular medicines yes some patients we do taper down and stop the medicines but that depends on your lung function and how your asthma control is but generally it has to be taken regularly till the time the doctor advises you so today we learned about uh, why inhaler therapy is the best in asthma and the importance of inhaler therapy for the treatment of asthma if you like this video kindly share it with your friends family colleagues and near and dear ones especially people who are suffering from it thank you